Well, I just oh, I did want to reiterate that it kind of looks like we just let this stuff go, and then at the end now we're saying, no, it's all your fault. But this was an ongoing problem throughout the, the almost the entire project. So it was brought up to the client many, many times in every project meeting and, and through weekly reports and stuff. So it was a, it basically what we're showing you here is just the backup data that, we, that we're going to then in turn use for the change order. Okay. So comes phase two of the analysis. So I think with all that data mining we did prior uh, in the previous slides, we gathered up enough intel to pull up all the, the documents, the delays, from document control, everything that kind of helped package up. Uh, but then the rest it is detailing out a, a uh, an analysis to show the impact, uh, what that cost us, how much that impacted us, and try and, and build up some of that, re recuperate some of that uh, money lost. So using the same method, we went through the earned value piece to do the comparison. Uh, we looked at schedule variances. Schedule variance uh, obviously is defined as uh, plan minus earn. I mean, earn minus plan, sorry. And it's, it's basically where we plan to be versus where we are today. The schedule variance that the six has is what's calculated in active. And there's a, you can see the disparity begins actually in September with a few of these, and it slowly depletes down in December, which supports the, the uh, story Pat's telling us now that, you know, in January, we basically hit some accumulative major amount of items that just were delayed, and that, that's the downfall, you know, effect from that variance. Uh, using uh, EAC also, you can see that uh, our man hours here were to be completed by January and by February, uh, obviously with all the delays, you know, EAC is going to calculate, you know, using that, using your, uh, your performance. So it's already estimating that for us to sustain, uh, hold our engineers and limbo waiting for these documents to return, approved, you know, that's just needed out more, more man hours. Uh, not, not in, let alone the delay in the, in the vessels, which costs a lot more. Uh, so, this gave us the impacts, so to speak, or at least the indicators to provide the impact. Yeah, that's about it, but, uh, I don't know if you want to bring up anything else. I wanted to leave a little bit of time, so if we wanted to go into the live demo, uh, we could, and then show you how we kind of goofed around in the system to make it work. Um, I'll open in for any questions, I guess. Anybody got questions? Did you do any risk assessments? Yeah, we, yeah. we did some extensive risk. Well, I, I guess, what, what, what you're showing on the screen there, uh, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of things that we can't already do in P6. So I was wondering if you guys had anything that you could show where you used fuse that you couldn't use P6 for. Well, what you can't do in P6 is you can only load three baselines at a time, and you can't load 14 in one shot and then show the graphic trend, right? Which is why we use this. Obviously, when you compare a baseline to the original or, or those snapshots, then you show the variances. But if you go back here, right? If I snapshot August versus the original, I'm not going to see that, right? So you'd almost have to hit the exact month to show the, the variance. Yeah, I mean, we know what's there, but uh, you get some trends going. But, but here, you can't do this. It doesn't work. You can do it in Excel, I'm sure, if you load it all together. Uh, uh, the guy we have, the, the other gentleman, John Wade, he is an extensive risk expert. I think he's more of a pain in there, but he calls Jason and Dan a lot. 
But uh, no, the, the part, of, part of a lot of this, there's a lot of extensive risk analysis that goes on in our world. Did you compare the uh, the result or the data and document with the pieces? Is they are consistent? No, they match or the same data? Yeah, like, for for SNI, like for like for SNI completion or M. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we actually we can do all the graphics and earn value in P6. Right? Uh, we have ways that if everything's loaded we can do all the the schedule variance and the you know the, the cumulative curves and the periodic performances out of P6. So that we did look at. So that was kind of an easy uh, sanity check, I guess you could call it. Okay. So then uh, combination of things between the uh, flow analysis, trace logic. You know, the earned value and support of the P6 and Excel, you know, these were all collected and, and provided to submit uh, to the client for claim change over which results are still pending, right? <laughs> <laughs> they think this slide is paying back. <clears throat> Any other questions? Anybody want to? You had enough of the technical, or I can show you the. Uh, I don't know how we play with the system. These are kids using the trend analysis. Yeah. What's that? It's there now. Yeah. Right. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's a, uh, you can see, at a snapshot you can do that, but hopefully, you know, when you have scope creep, it's hard to, to, to manage those little, those disparities as they grow. So loading the uh, snapshots and into the diagnostics. <clears throat> right, trend analysis, keep in mind, didn't exist. So we basically monkeyed around with this ribbon analyzer. Uh, and the lines here. So because every project is, is uh, representing the timeline, it acts like a timeline. Otherwise, in its natural element, uh, Acumen was only looking at it from a vertical fashion and not, not in a comparison of the time. Because the time element is only each time in itself. Right? Now with the trend analyzer, which exists, you can get that same result. Uh, and then obviously, you can perform the charts a lot better. So then you can select your criteria compare it against itself, show them, turn, you know, turn them off. And as you find uh, the anomalies you're looking for, or trends, then you can go back into the ribbon, go into the trace logic, come back to the next one. Uh, I think the same applies for uh, term value. still applies. You can still use this ribbon, but the trend analyzer there uh, gives you the ability to do it. So if you look at schedule variance, right, or EAC, and you can begin to, to do that. But uh, for this, you know, we use P6. We have a lot of that. 
to an out of P6. It does the same thing. Okay. Any questions? Uh, when you input the cost data in P6, do you put the cost data like per unit or total cost for the WBS item? For each item, total cost. You mean like a WBS summer? Yeah, when you upload the cost, do you use like unit and uh, cost per unit? Yes, we use... Um, or, or just the total cost per item? I don't want to tell everybody our secrets, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what we do is, we, we use unit, okay, but if you, if, for those of you versed in P6, know one thing, is activity percent complete does not blow up at the WBS summary level, right? It's just known. Uh, it's intended for different purposes, right? Because it's broken out into uh, labor, material, or such. So what we use is the cost element, and we use the performance percent complete that gives us the roll -up, right? So even though units is applied, we have to uh, resource load it with the appropriate resource and then apply. We, we use a, a philosophy if, we're, if we have a strictly man hours and engineering environment, we'd say a dollar equals an hour. So the cost per unit is a dollar per hour so that we use the cost element and it'll still behave you know, with the earned value functionality, which means you will still have an earned value, you can still apply an actual uh, expenditure, and the results out of P6 will give you the same thing, right? Then you get the, the total roll up at the WBS level. Uh, because if you just use activity percent complete, uh, you're not gonna get the roll up. You, you won't see it. The other problem that a lot of uh, planners aren't aware of is P6 calculates earned value or percent complete based on off of the baseline that's assigned and that's where a lot of mistakes happen in schedules is they either have the wrong budget from the original baseline and scope growth or scope drop and it'll take a percentage times the weighted value and it's incorrect so you know clients will pick up like that pretty quickly if, if you're doing earned value and things look inconsistent, right? Or if you have something in the current schedule, do not exist in the baseline. Exactly. Yeah. You almost have to modify the baseline to incorporate any change order in PDNs that you want to track as change so that you have the consistent values. So you look credible. The problem you'll have there is grief from the client for changing the baseline. So you have to create a, what we call a PMB, which is a progress measurable baseline. So you keep the original intact, but then you have to have the other one with the corrected values. Uh, so there's a bit of massaging for the system in order to keep it accurate. Uh, so, so why did you mention that you used the earned value calculation for P6 and you didn't use the other? Why? Use uh, which one? The, the earned value calculation from P6, you already use it and you decided not to use them uh, from Acumen. Why? You Acumen just inherits whatever comes across from uh, yeah. physics. But I didn't check anything about... Oh, yeah. yeah. We, uh, that, I think we had asked someone, somebody that asked that. Yeah, this was only like a sanity check, I guess you could call it. Like if we compare this versus P6, you know, the data is, is I guess, it's consistent. Right. Uh, for Acumen, it was really the, the flow depletion and, and the relationships behind that. Uh, the curves and everything else we can produce out of the P6. Any other questions? Questions?
forms on the tables, I'll pick them up after you leave. Remember the honky tonk bus? 545 on the front. Wear your name tag. Get your drink. Good choice. See Dan right here. <laughs>